But yeah, so I've been progressively getting better with the Discord technical details here with like the microphone, the camera and stuff. And so actually in like a month or so, I'm moving to a new place. I'll have an even better like background look at it. It won't rival Kev's uh, castle, but Obviously, <laughs> it'll look, uh, it'll look in more interesting than like just bright yellow. I'm in my, my parents, my childhood bedroom, actually, which we painted for whatever oh. reason, like the color of sand. Oh, wow. um, so it's interesting. But yeah, so I'll have a, a more interesting background to look at in like a month. Nice. The thing is, you love sand because uh, the first tutorial yeah. I watched of yours is the sand tutorial, you know? That's true. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. Always well, been surrounded by sand. Well, if, oh, if, yeah. if we have background envy, I've, I've noticed that Discord has a new beta feature. So, uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> apparently, what? apparently you could change the background style. I guess they were catching up with Zoom oh. or something, but. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Yeah. I, don't know about it. says, I want to try that immediately, I but that? I couldn't find There's, it. Where I don't, did you find it? First? I don't know if I've got like a beta thing enabled or not, but basically by the bottom where you have the camera, there's like a drop down arrow. And then from there I can choose change video background, but I don't know if everyone will have that. Mm. I don't see that on mine. I just see, uh, my different devices. Right. Okay. It's it's not perfect. I like it. The tropical normal. background, nice. Yeah, we'll, uh, I'll go back to normal now. <laughs> yeah, so I've been working remote from kind of all over the place. I'm back in Philadelphia now with my family, but I'm moving to uh, DC uh, finally oh, back to the right. city. Okay. Um, I'm not going to be going back to work in person for I don't even know how long. They they still want us to be working remote, and most of the work I I can do remote. I'm traveling in October to Florida for a spacecraft launch, but mm -hmm. apart from that, I'm just going to be working from my apartment so I'll, I'll be moving into like a new place you going to the cape yeah it'd be my first time ever going there i've never i know you guys have both <laughs> been to the uh um cape canaveral before to see like the visitor center and everything there i've never been so i'm excited to check it out wish it was under yes. better circumstances like not during a global pandemic when florida is getting kind of slammed right now but oh, um I, I, I know at least the center we it's uh still mask required vaccination uh strongly encouraged i'm vaccinated fully um, so I'm excited to see it and I'm going to be like busy probably 24 seven. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to like peel off too much to see stuff, but, um, I've heard Cocoa beach is nice. That's where I'm going to be staying. $5 pictures there. So it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's really good. And, and the, the cruise ships, you know, come in all the time. So, well, actually now they're not, but yeah. <laughs> I hear yeah. Wild. Okay. So hopefully we'll be toasting the success of this launch. So, so, so like the, there's yeah. a specific launch you're going to go and see then. Yeah, it's uh, one of the missions I'm covering. Uh, it's called Lucy. It's going to the right. Trojan asteroids, which are uh, Lagrange points in front of and behind Jupiter. Uh, and we're going to be going, it's a 12 year long mission. So it's a long time. Mm -hmm. I, I think the journey to get out to the first target is going to be like three years itself. We have to do a gravitational assist first and then slingshot out there. And then between targets going to take like a year or two. So there's seven total targets. Um, and then each one is kind of spaced out a bit. So it's going to take like a year or two to get between them and we'll have like maybe a half hour at each one to take pictures as we zoom by really quickly yeah. um wow. so it's kind of an insane mission that way um so planning for it's been really strange and then also um the communications aspect has been weird too because it's like how do you hold people's attention for 12 years so mm -hmm. i've been working on this like cartoon series oh, yeah. uh kind of more yeah. so marketed for like the next generation of scientists next generation of engineers right um for elementary school middle school kids who will be growing up with this mission over the next decade plus um so that's gonna be kind of coming out slowly over the next couple of weeks the name to the launch as well uh we have a coloring book associated with it it's got like little puzzles and stuff in there you can learn wow. how to draw lucy uh so it, it should be fun so we're going to be trying to make like a little poster series with like little postcards kind of in like the national park vintage style for all the different targets with like little lucy explorer there um so it should be fun but it's yeah it's been a long process kind of getting everything together for them yeah, you guys are going to cool. get your first picture before james webb is up in space <laughs> i know yeah a lot of my coworkers are covering that too they've been going down to french uh, guiana for the launch it's coming up uh you know just a couple months too here as well so that's God, hopefully that goes well it's been mm. years in the making they just finished think testing i think it... didn't they yeah they just yeah. officially finished testing and they're going to be shipping it i think pretty soon um that is just so nerve wracking because it's just billions of dollars of oh. very delicate equipment. Oh, if that goes so, wrong. Yeah. I mean, it can't go wrong at this point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Not going away. Yeah. It's, it's scary. The company that's been building it has been doing a very, very good job. So you know, everybody, everybody rags on them because, oh, it's taken so long. Like, no, it got to do it right. That long. It's taking that long because the people in there know what they're doing. And yeah. they want it. To be, they want it to be a success, and they're not going to let this thing out the door unless it's actually perfect. Plus, there's been scope creep on this thing for years too. But oh, you yeah. know, I mean, 
I mean, they've been building like, it up where you are actually at Northrop uh, in LA area. Yeah, they're building it in LA down in the in the South Bay. Yeah. So uh, yeah, at the uh, I believe at the Space Park facility. So yeah, they're they're um yeah it's 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 gonna go. It's it's gonna be good. And, and honestly, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm excited because I know that there are there's a line of astrophysicists that have already signed up for time on this thing. Once once it's out at, at you know L two. And it's deployed, and it's doing its thing, and and we get those first pings back from it. These astrophysicists already have their 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 section of the sky they want to look at, and I, the answers we're going to start getting back from this are going to be, I mean, it's going to change. It's going to change humanity. It really is. It's going to be beautiful. I mean, Hubble already changed so much, and this is just like yeah. Hubble times a thousand. It's going to be like just the the far the depth far back we could look and in, into uh, the solar system and beyond is just incredible i'm so excited mm -hmm. to see what we get from it yep. i'm just waiting for people to find new elements that we don't have in the <laughs> periodic table it's all like what do we find yeah. are like already existed i'm just so curious to know what other elements uh -huh. are there outside i know like I, I, because they can do like spectrometer readings and stuff. Like so, they can actually like figure out you know the the, the composition of things based on light spectra and all sorts of stuff. And yeah. and this is going to have like a infrared and, and a whole bunch of you know very delicate sensors on it. Uh, so I, I think I we might add to the periodic table. I mean that's not certainly not out of the question, right? There's a certain number of people trying to synthesize new elements on Earth as well, but it's definitely I don't know if it's got as much backing. Uh, the problem with that is like stable isotopes for um atoms because you can make like a, f a few uh, atoms of like an element that we don't have naturally but then they just they're just gone immediately like in a, a fraction of a second yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Oh. probably that's because of the atmosphere conditions on earth but yeah yeah it's because well i think it is because of the stabilized type problem there's like a i think they call it a plateau of stability especially for like radioactive elements and stuff mm -hmm. where like yeah. if if you don't have a very very specific isotope it's, it's just gone like immediately yeah. it's gone so, you have like yeah. a, an extremely short half-life the whole the whole element's gone it's gone it's gone yeah uh hi archer by the way <laughs> yeah, true. good to see you man hello it's been so long. hey james good to see your mug and everyone else's too but you know Is this guy's a special one because i haven't seen you in a bit yeah guys man. i just um i just hit upload on making films with blender and your phone finally been working awesome. on this for a week nice. it's a okay. video all about you know explaining photogrammetry and lidar and how i'm using polycam it, it started out as a video that was going to be just a one like 14 minute video but now it's stretched out so it's going to be a three-part thing but i need to sleep man <laughs> go go yeah, watch I'm it sleep. everyone go and watch his video. yeah i'll check it out i'll check it out yeah. after this it sounds very yeah. useful oh look who that link guy in the is. description who, who's that? Yeah. Look at that. Color. Okay, no spoilers. Love that. <laughs> colors. What's wrong with you? Look at that, oh, that lighting spray. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah, the, the lighting actually... paid off then. It yeah. did. Yeah, no, I've been working on 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 uh, chapters and all of that, you know, for a bit. And then I look at the time. It was 11 last I looked at my phone. And now Whoa. it's 2.15. And so I went on Discord because I was having trouble coming up with a thumb, uh, not a thumbnail. Well, yes, always a thumbnail, but coming up with a title, which by the way, if you do watch the video and you think that a better title is more suitable, just drop it in the comments because I'd love to, I'd love the input. And I had asked Blender Nest for some input and I go and I help the, I check the help channel and uh, I'm like, wait a minute, why are they all in a voice call right now? And then <laughs> it dawned on me, the time has come. So the we're time. here. Yeah. We were actually just briefly talking about the whole like um swapping out titles thing just before this because mm. yeah. like um uh, and like how everyone does it or like all the big youtubers do it yeah but i've never done it because i always thought none that, of us do it yeah well i, I always catch it i always thought that i wasn't allowed to or that it would like ruin something or stop recommending something if you like kept changing the data you know um but apparently mm. not i've seen it quite a bit when i'll watch a video and then i see it again and i'm like wait the thumbnail's different and the title's different, but they're still slightly related to what I watch. And then I'll click through, and you know, it must must be some A/B testing through like TubeBuddy or something. Yeah, um, yeah. I I don't know if I'll I've change did, I... thumbnails like much in the future because my channel's got like a very consistent theme with it now. It's always got like Wait, the yeah, you've got like really clean mm -hmm. thumbnails. Yeah, I think the title is going to make more of a difference to me. Um, 
because I keep trying different things and I'm kind of settling into a bit of a formula of like you know one capi one capitalized word and then like you know a few other things but I don't know maybe you throw three in all caps in there with <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what brings the views. I used to do free that blender on, on on my mailing free list. I used to do it all the time. New free something, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Works every oh yeah, what's the last video where you're talking about like how you amassed like an empire of people to email? Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like that is clever, man. That's good. I didn't even think of that. That's a good approach. Yeah, that's I, the uh, best way. I, the Zuckerberg approach. I think I held off on telling people yeah. about that for a little while in the first year. I would have to get ahead. <laughs> I, saw, I, I don't know. Use the mailing list. list. Yeah. It's pretty huge, but I never use my mailing list. Yeah, d Andrew Price. I, I heard somewhere that someone said that he had like what two hundred and something, two hundred k. Yeah, in the list. Wow, building, really? Yeah, mail building chain. a list is really clever and and the way to go. Even though it seems, yeah. at least in the past like six years or so, um, like when I started working doing consulting stuff with people, at first it seemed like you know building a mailing list, why would you want to do that? But now that people have all these different adverse reactions to different social medias, now everyone's kind of like, oh, I should build a list just in case if I have to hop off the service or this other service, I can still email blast people. Um, so if yeah. you haven't started building your list, build it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I found that. myself yeah. like unsubscribing from a lot of the emails and stuff that I get just because there's like a lot of spam. So I was wondering like what your approach is when you guys send out an email. Are you like for when you publish a new video pushing it out or are you just kind of hoping that YouTube is uh, people are going to find it through there or through like Discord if you post it on some of the channels there? Well, um, for me, I, I I used to do it for like every video when, when it started because I was giving away a package with every video and I thought, okay, well, it's a Gumroad focused mailing list. So if I put something on Gumroad, then it's okay to share. Um, then I started doing newsletters to kind of like sneak in some other things. It's like, oh, here's some new things on Gumroad, by the way. Here's a few other videos, you know? So it was more like, you know, a longer thing. Then yeah. I kind of stopped doing it for a while and I'm starting to do it again. Like the last two videos had demo files. So I, I shared it, but I don't think I'll do it for the next one because I don't want to overdo it too much. Yeah. Um, I've seen other creators that like, we'll do a sale when they put out like five emails for the same sale and i'm like okay i'm not gonna annoy people that much but uh um, yeah but yeah i think there's like it really depends on your audience as well um i've tried to kind of balance it out because i used to do like you know product announcements and sales on the mailing list but now i think okay well if i do them pointing to videos as well then it kind of reminds people why they're on the mailing list rather than just having it like just squeezing out like a very capitalist you know, oh, please buy this on this sale, please buy this and then buy this and then buy this. It's like, okay, well, here's something for you again. You know, here's some education. This is why you signed up in the first place. Um, I think there is probably like an art form to it and maybe a bit of a science behind not peeing people off, should we say? Uh, yeah. I think, yeah, like the weekly newsletter seems like a, the best approach because then you can kind of put like a couple things in there, not, you know, have people kind of on a timeline expecting the email to. It's like, oh, it's Saturday morning, I'm going to be getting this email from this creator. Yeah. with like the weekly rundown of stuff and as opposed to like oh randomly at like two in the morning i'm getting an email 30 percent off flash sale like i think that seems to be kind of like a turn off is those random unexpected emails it's like curtis yeah. why are you hitting yeah. me up and like <laughs> with a you up message here for your sale 30 percent off and i've built lists before in in different spaces not not in blender not in 3d at all um and and it's it's a trick because you your mail providers your your mail service um providers you like in order to stay on people's radar, you kind of got to keep pinging them because so so many things, they're, they're just we're getting hit by so much advertising all the time, all the time. So many messages, so much social media, so much crap, and um, you, you kind of got to stay on people's radar. So I've seen people who mail every single day, and mm. you're always going to get the drop offs. But the point is, when you have an email list, your open rate, your first your first few emails that you send out because people are jazzed they just joined your list they're, they're like expecting stuff from you your open rates are pretty high on those but then they drop to like 15 percent. so for every email blast you send out you're getting like 15 percent opens so out of that so out of that 15 percent, if you have a call to action maybe you're getting like a, a, a very small percentage maybe down to even one percent of people or ten percent of people clicking through on that link and then of that people taking action is even like like less so it's it's diminishing returns as as the you know as as the, the they go down the the pipeline, and you know I've seen the people who have a lot of success mailing every day, but the trick is if you do that you start getting spam complaints, and if you do get too many spam complaints, then your service provider looks at you and shuts you down. So it's okay. a big 
big balancing act. So I probably wouldn't be sending out emails if Gumroad didn't let you, because when you look at things like MailChimp, and even like um, Squarespace has its own kind of mailing system, but you have to pay monthly for those. Yep. And even then, yep. you can only send out a certain number of emails. Like, it doesn't matter what size plan you have, like, there's always an upper limit for it, which isn't really something you want to hear if you're trying to, like, you know, grow an audience into the future. You want to think, ah, if I've got 10 million, you know, people signed up for it, I want to be able to, you know, message all of them. Um, Gumroad doesn't really have those limits because maybe it hasn't thought about it yet, but um, I'm glad it doesn't. So when you upgrade, like, because you can send out, like, four emails a month, I think, to your audience on the free version, but then, like, unlimited on the upgrade version. And if, you, if you're making money with Gumroad, it pays for itself anyway, so why wouldn't you? Um, but it doesn't have those limits. Like, you can send out, like, to a, any size audience that you want. And you're not no. paying for, like, a separate mailing service. So it's it's too good to be true in that regard. So I don't think I would really be... Good. I don't think I'd be using, like, a mailing list on, like, MailChimp or whatever if that wasn't a thing. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. I'm curious to know how often this has happened to you all. So I just, uh, like I said, I just released this video. I did the rounds, posted on Twitter quickly. And as soon as a Twitter feed refreshes, uh, there's a tweet from someone mentioning that one of the cameras that I was actually going to talk about in the second part of this video, the team is now shutting down and they're no longer doing anything with the camera. So how, how often does it happen to you all that you're working on something and then it either becomes obsolete or you have to change halfway through and uh yeah i'm curious yeah about I, those moments. I struggle Everyone sometimes with like broken links and stuff so sometimes i'll like make a video and i'll link like the assets or whatever that i've used and i'll sometimes get messages from people like oh that like image is no longer available or it's no longer free or something so sometimes right. i'll just go through and like in the description we'll post like kind of a disclaimer about that be like oh like this is the new link to get this thing or i'll update on my website where i've kind of got the stuff hosted there but if it's in like the video itself uh, if you haven't, it sounds like you haven't released it yet, so you can kind of adjust, I guess, accordingly. But if it's already out there, I mean, I guess it's kind of tough. Like maybe put like a one of those call cards or something in it, like the mm. little call out cards, kind of just say like, "Hey, like this is not a thing anymore." Or you can also edit out portions of the video too. So one time, somehow, like my, um, I was showing my desktop. This is like super embarrassing. I was showing my desktop uh for like a tutorial on blender and somehow like my driver's license like appeared like oh, no, in there no. and it was like oh, an no. hour-long video that i recorded and i'd like hadn't i guess like scanned through like i was kind of like just brushed through. i'm like oh, okay it's probably good like i watched through most of it but like the 47th minute or so i don't even know when it was some like crazy minute in it for like a, like a fraction of a second my thing was there and someone like wrote in the description like i got like full hd view of your license and luckily i just posted it so like 10 people had seen it so yeah. I went through and just like edited out that portion. You can like trim in YouTube and it just like oh, refreshes God. the video and as if it just cuts. So if you watch it now, it just like kind of skips like six seconds and it's like, but that's good to hell out of me. Um, yeah. It was just like really bad. <laughs> so, How did you yeah. even like exactly go to that point? Like, you know, I guess limited time. they had watched the whole thing through, I guess, already. It was like a longer tutorial. So I expected usually when I post like an hour long thing, I expect kind of over the course of a couple of weeks, people kind of digest it. I'll get comments like, oh, this is great. I'll watch like the full thing when I've got time like next week and whatever. I get comments like that. It's like, OK, yeah. Um, so I was expecting people to kind of just slowly parse through it. I didn't expect someone to like follow it end to end, like, I don't know, a minute after I posted <laughs> it. So, yeah, that was. It was a good catch that it was that early. Um, but yeah, I guess that's an answer for that. If it was like a section that you could easily cut out uh, without kind of losing too much of the thread of your video, you can just trim it that way if it's already posted. Mm. Yeah, that's I'm quite, scary. I'm quite paranoid about that. I like, <laughs> whenever I'm editing, I, I will watch the video like five times or so um, before I put it out. Yeah. But but not not like it over. I'll do like, like the first pass, which is all just trimming down, then to keep an eye out for stuff. And then like every time I do another kind of editing pass, I'll just keep an eye out. And there's always something that I want to change. But like I've only had it once where I've had to edit a video and it was when like something I said, like a piece of information was no longer right. So it was like about like the pricing of something, for example, I can't remember exactly what it was, but I was like, okay, well, this is really misleading now because that's changed. So I'm going to snip that out and got rid of it. Um, but yeah, there's been a couple of occasions again with like files where someone changes or deletes something or like changes the name of a product and then it breaks links or whatever. But I think there was like a matcap one where I had like a link to a bunch of matcaps and then the person just completely removed all the files. So everyone was like, where's it gone? Where's it gone? So oh, yeah. God. I think yeah. most recently though, you know, Pierrick um, came out of his animation course. Um, so he was talking to me up until the release and he was kind of keeping me updated on how it was going. 
and it, it, like it's it's really cool you should go and check it out um so i had like a video i was going to do where i was going to announce that it was going to be coming at some point because he had already put out like a like a teaser video so i was going to do like a news one that's like oh hey this is coming out but then just as i was about to release that he sent me like that's a whole host of new information about it and i was like all right so i can either put that one out and then very quickly make a new one about the release of all this cool information or i can just delete this entire video i've made and then just make a new one so i did that i made a new one instead and to be honest that was much more worthwhile um so yeah because like it kind of just introduced the whole thing in one big burst got people excited and then so sometimes very rarely that'll happen but yeah sometimes like oh here's a bunch of information throw away everything you've done and just do something new instead yeah well, the same thing happened that to me course. once um like um i made this amazing tutorial that i thought would be helpful for everyone regarding nodes and literally the same video was posted like you know same video as in like the whole editing is done and someone else uh, actually made a tutorial on exact same topic with the same result so I had to delete the video out from my hard drive. Oh. I was going to mention about that the animation course alive. It is it's it's a great course. I haven't finished it, but I'm I think four or five chapters in and really really loving it. Not an ad, not sponsored, just an honest yeah. review. Yeah, he spent yeah, he spent a happening. really long time on that. Like the course wise, as yeah, you can go. Tell. Yeah, he um because there was a gap in the kind of Blender educational market because uh, if I say no one has done one, like people come along and say, oh no, but you know what about this on Udemy? And I'll be like, okay, well um he like there there was there was a proper gap for it, for, like a proper animation course, like if you want to make stuff for video games, like uh, or like whatever kind of animated shorts you want, this is the right way to do it, you know, with with all the demonstrations as well, going from the fundamental bouncing ball to like the, the kind of quadruped squirrel type thing to full on human bipedal animation and like the kind of mech yeah. action sequences and what he's like here are all like the case examples of what you want to do you spend like two years preparing mm -hmm. it i think like and yeah, it together. It makes sense. yeah it makes sense yeah. yeah it's 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 honestly really impressive i think it was either gleb or no it was grant grant abbott released a video about it talking about how it would be he he thinks it would be the go-to animation course and that's really what you know because i'd been curious about it i'd seen some of Pyrrhic's work as well and um was pretty excited so when it released i um i was like let's see what people were saying i saw that video by grant and i'm like okay let's check it out and uh, i think it holds up i would say the same and yeah. i think it actually it's it's either um i read today it's either being considered to go under either creative shrimp or another platform oh amazing. do you know any did you hear anything about that? Because that would know. be cool if, if you could track your progress in the course in that way. Yeah. But I did honestly, a like... school of motion course for the first time ever back in the beginning of this year too. And I know that's not for Blender, it's for Cinema 4D. 4D yeah. But it was super well run too, the way they had it. Um, the assignments were really moving quickly, so you had to get stuff done kind of on a quick turnaround. Um, but just the way they did it, tracking the progress, I thought was really helpful. They had a TA that you were paired with. Um, there's like a Facebook group that went along with it. So you share your posts and kind of comment on other people's stuff. Um, and I think it was really useful to learn, I guess, more the MoGraph side of things for Cinema 4D. It's way easier than Blender's, I feel like, in a lot of ways. I know Blender's kind of catching yeah. up with like geometry nodes and animation nodes and stuff. But mm. in Cinema 4D, it's like you click on one of these effectors and it's like your job is done. Something that takes like a thousand things to do in Blender. It's like there's like a, an effector for that that takes like five seconds to add in. So I just kind of had a new appreciation for Blender going back to it again. Just like, holy crap, like there's, you know, a lot more skill I think you need to have um, kind of in the bank to do some of these animations in Blender. Um, so if you're making the switch ever from Blender to Cinema 4D, it's much easier transition. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, like the, these courses are fun. Like, I mean, I was kind of hesitant to like pay for it. I was able to get um, funding for it, but it, it's like, you know, there's so many free resources on YouTube already, but you always wonder, like, what is the curriculum that you're following? You know, a lot of these kind of spread out videos that are covering different tips. You kind of have to make your own uh, course in a way if you're watching just YouTube and kind of construct it that way. Sometimes like people like Grant or you know, some of you guys have done this as well. We kind of have like a course of sorts that goes through, but, you know, you can't track your progress. There aren't really assignments that are being graded as much. So I think it does pay, even though Blender is free to dish out a little bit of money for some of these really good courses to uh, just kind of further strengthen your skills and and have that actual guidance through it, 
you know, kind of a more structured course, similar to what you would maybe get in art school or university um, to kind of learn, get up to speed with things. Yeah, regarding the school of motion, I actually remember the instructor himself uh, replied to one of your tweets on that one. Oh, EJ? I mean, one of the, EJ? Yeah. 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 Yeah, he's a super cool guy. He he was the main teacher for it. So like all the videos that we watched were like pre-recorded ones that he had put together. Um, and he does a fantastic job explaining things uh, just through and through. Really, really, really well done. I thought it was definitely a course that I recommend to other people. Um, Which course was that? Is that Motion Beats? It was uh, Intermediate Animation, Motion and Graphics with Cinema 4D and Redshift. Okay. I think it was like the title or something along those lines. Um, yeah. There was like the base camp one for Cinema 4D. Um, I've already had experience with it, so I just jumped to the intermediate one. Um, and I was able to follow it pretty well. They kind of ease you into it enough. Like the first couple of assignments are just getting used to the interface again because I had just been using Blender primarily for the past like year or two. So it took me a second to kind of figure out where the the buttons were, how to click things and select things. And it's always different. And when I come back to Blender, I'm always like spamming the same keys. I'm like, why is this doing nothing? Like, why am I not selecting anything? It's like, oh, it's like control click or oh it's shift and click this thing or oh it's, it's, like, it's uh, like the space bar man. i you run into that so much yeah, no, i'm loading bar, houdini like, and houdini houdini is, the, houdini is the worst with that because space bar and houdini <laughs> you used to like orbit around and if you hit space bar and blender it's it, it it's launches like, the timeline and you're like yeah, yeah, why, why is everything why? Uh, you're like oh my timeline's running all right hold on <laughs> that, that that's a question you know forget your astrological sign what's your space bar bound to in blender because i've got mine bound to the to search the, yeah obviously. search i've got mine on oh search. really you guys are just <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah Good. Before it wow, was search, okay. but then now I'm because I'm doing animation. I thought I'll just switch it to animation for now. No, <laughs> uh, search. I will say in my in my defense, because <laughs> like like maybe I take a bit more more of a programmatical stance. I use the search feature quite a lot, you know, to to find functions mm -hmm. by name. So I just like you know mm -hmm. tap tap and type. I don't need to like move my hands anywhere else. You know, tap with the thumb and start typing for an operation. My um my play timeline is Shift A. That's how I use it. Because I guess I'm using oh, the, search, uh, the other way. Mm. For search, I use a universal tool, which is F3. I'll just use that right. for searching anything. The but... best search tool for Blender is actually all F4. It's a really good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can recommend. Control Q as well. Control Shift Q if you want. Just remember to save. <laughs> yeah. It, it is funny when, when teaching people, because I've like tutored a couple of friends. Um, whenever I catch myself saying, oh, just press... F3, press F3, and then like type this, and then do that. You have to like kind of memorize everything that you changed about Blender. So when you like teach people about it, you think, oh god, okay. I've got like a checklist of all the things that I changed now, so I can kind of keep a track on it. So and... that's exactly why I don't think I'm gonna do tutorials like step by step anymore, because I'm just gonna show the workflow of everything in my upcoming tutorials. Yeah. But if I go step by step, then I'm I have to make a course on every shader that I make. I think. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Like I'm like, I used to do. You know, I was doing step by step by step, and it was just taking me forever to do a video. And I was like, I, and you know, and it, it puts it out there, and if, I don't know. I I'm so much happier just doing like, hey, this is what I did. <laughs> you know? yeah. I like the story format. Kev. Yeah, you're doing amazing. Don't Thanks, stop, man. please. Yeah, I just I'm just gonna do the story format. I, I I'm so much happier doing it. Like for for courses, like the courses that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna obviously those are gonna be step by step, you know, labored explanations and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Um, for YouTube, I'm like, you know what? YouTube's just people just care about entertainment <laughs> on YouTube. I mean, like there there are some learners out there, but it's just entertainment. And if you want to be successful on YouTube, it's just. I mean, everything that just takes off is entertainment based. I'm like, whatever. Like, yeah. if you want an audience, and you also you still learn stuff from it too. I feel like with those story driven things, like I think, especially for people who are a little bit more advanced in the software too, uh, as opposed to like a yeah. step by step tutorial, just kind of seeing someone's workflow, how they approach the problem and work through something is, I think, way more helpful in a lot of times than just step by step. Okay, what button do they click now? Okay, how do they do this? Just kind of a broader strokes thing, and it also feels like leaves the viewer a little bit more satisfied because in a short amount of time you see a finished piece, and even if you didn't, you know, replicate it yourself, you're seeing kind of the the step by step process that a, a I guess a more advanced person would take to do a certain problem. On the um the light nodes video, which was I think the second mm -hmm. to last one that I did, I did like a quick breakdown at the beginning. It's the first time I tried it. It was like, okay, this is what we're going to be learning. Here's a very quick breakdown, and then, and then I spoke fast and did like, okay, I did this, then this, then this, then this, and that's the result. And then I went into like the longer tutorial, so and then did it all slowly, and um, people really appreciated that. 
because I, I yeah. there was once person that said um thanks i appreciate that because i usually like finding things out for myself but just having some direction it's like oh actually yeah that's something i never really considered before some people actually enjoy the process of like trying to figure it out if they're like you know intermediate enough with the software so um, yeah i guess it's kind of a good thing to put in but it's not always appropriate for like every tutorial sometimes yeah. you're doing something that's yeah. like too simple to like do a breakdown for because it will only take like half mm -hmm. a second to explain to people like in a short way yeah so today we're going to be doing this with nodes and then that's it you know so but yeah but about um course content on youtube i think youtube is actually missing an opportunity because youtube is kind of designed in a way that isn't really suitable for like multi-part courses anymore because, uh, you know, people, everyone starts the first video and then people skip to the end video. Like, very rarely will you get people watching the entire series all the way through. And it's not yeah. great for analytics, especially if you're spending so long putting out, like, hey, here's part six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, and whatever. Um, but you know how YouTube's been playing around with, like, membership systems now, where you can pay for yeah. videos? They still kind of appear on the channel page, I think, which I'm not sure if, if that's a great idea or not, but. YouTube has like the store tab for channels but you can like put merch and stuff. Why don't they get into the educational business where like um, YouTubers can sell courses and they appear separately from the videos because they could take a I cut from that. It doesn't have to be too yeah. much. YouTube yeah. is the perfect platform for it and then you could track your progress on there. So I don't know why YouTube hasn't kind of dived into Done the market that. yet. Um, I know. I, I would. I would take advantage of that. I would. I would make courses and sell them on YouTube. That would be great. Like, because the, the audience is already there. Yeah. Exactly. Whether Come or on, not. YouTube. Whether or not. I, I, and and I. I wonder. And and I, and I've spoken, you know, time and again to people about this. Whether or not YouTube is a viable education platform, I learn from it because I know what I'm looking for. You guys do. But how much of the audience on YouTube is there just for entertainment. So if you can like peel away the learners from that, then awesome. I, I think that's a great, you know, a great idea because yeah. the audience is definitely there, the people who are, because there's a crossover too. There's not just, you know, they're not just like there for entertainment and not for education. Like, you know, people who see something and they go, oh, I'd love to learn that. Oh, he's got a course. Okay, I'll check it out. So I think yeah. in the volume, you can, in the volume, you can, you can, um, you can peel back the learners from that. Which is really no. cool. It just, but going back to the, what we were talking about with with the educational step by step versus you know the explainer stuff. It's like, yeah, the, when I, whenever I do the 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 step by step educational stuff, it, the videos go nowhere. Like mm. they just they just die on the vine. It's like even if it's even if the interest is there at the start, that graph that shows you know audience retention over time, it goes to almost like zero at the end. You know, and sometimes it drops off and it goes to zero halfway through. People get bored of it. Or they're, you know, they're distracted by, you know, the, the, the next TikTok video that shows up in their recommended feed. <laughs> so it's, it's, you know, YouTube is just, I don't know, it's just kind of diminishing returns when I do the step-by-step -step stuff that I actually like doing, but I'm, I'm actually more happy just recording myself doing something and then going back and saying, you know, hey, this is how I did it. But a lot but, of it's completely yeah, random at times too, what, what does well and what doesn't, I feel like sometimes like just something will just get knocked out of the park it just it does super well one of these kind of step-by-step -step things just because it really resonates with some community or it's embedded somewhere um like on some forum where people just find it on mass from there and just can get through it i know like my last yeah. video though that did really really well was that meat monster video and i think it was because a it was tapping into something that people can recognize and uh yeah. and, and b like i just kind of explained it and maybe i just did it the right way because the next video after that really didn't do anything and i was kind of from like from from his dark materials but then i'm like how many people actually watched his dark materials like it was an awesome show but it was on hbo and h you know not not a whole lot of people have hbo um but by the way kev yeah thumbnail was amazing for that video by the way that's why probably it, i think it oh, has the best for... thumbnail on the channel it probably does you're right I, that, yeah. that thumbnail is really good <laughs> so uh you know um but i it, you're right it's it is kind of random and you got to kind of figure out what what is making it and like daniel said last week it's it's a million little things mm. that, that million add little up. small things a million little small things that add up to the success of a youtube video and a channel yeah. and when when you when somebody's pressed for time um keeping the channel going like for me is just in, insanely difficult um because i i yeah, i've been lucky enough to keep getting hit up for freelance jobs in addition to my day job so i'm like well if YouTube, if people would watch the videos and I would get that sweet AdSense money, then I could take on less freelance. But 
that's not the case. So I have to go where the money is right now because honestly, I have bills to pay and I have food to put on the table. So I got to think on the freelance. So constantly making videos, it has to have a return. And for me, the only way I can do them is doing the explainer videos now. Yeah. That makes sense. I mean, uh, again, when you make a course and you do it in the explainer format, no one is going to like it. And if you make it edutainment, then again, they'll be like, they won't, they might not like it. It should be yeah, like that... proper course, like, you know, because they paid for it. They need the seriousness of it. And I oh, think, yeah. uh, I think that's how it works. Yeah. A course, if I'm giving a course, I want it to be academic. I want it to be explained. I want it to be, you know, I, I, I will, I will, it, when I'm making courses, like I, I, I have a master's degree in education and I learned how to put courses together. And actually it was, the, the focus was online. Um, it was, it was for online learning and this is back in 2005 that I got it, but um, I would definitely have rubrics. I would have everything laid out. Like it would be an actual course. It would be like a college level course. Like, it, like I designed courses for college level and taught in college before. And like, that's how I would go about, go ahead and make a course. And uh, that's yeah. time, time consuming, but it's worth it because when you're paying for something, that's what people expect. Hmm. YouTube, it could be anything. I mean, you, you could have a you, you, you could have a video of a cat on fire. You know, I mean, and people are like, oh, that's funny. I'm gonna watch it. But if you're paying for a course, it's completely different. Going going back to the idea of like have, having YouTube sell, let you sell courses. I don't wanna like you know you know to the idea too much, but oh my god, it makes so much sense. You know, like underneath the videos, sometimes you can see people's merch, like yeah. laid out there. What if you had your courses there? So like you're watching just like. The kind of nice tutorial by someone like Kev, you know, explaining, oh, I did this, this, and this. And then you look down, he's got like Kev's like VFX course, Kev's this course. And it's just there if they want it. Like, I love exactly. that. YouTube's, YouTube's putting yeah. all these other weird monetization things in now. We've got like the kind of thanks donation thing, which I think is quite cool. You can just donate on a video or the super chance mm -hmm. to membership things. Why not this? You've already got the store tab or, there. Or else, yeah. like, you can just put like a bar of the videos that you recommended to watch next right down there which would lead yeah. to the next video. For example, if I mention Kev's video, why don't you just put like a bar, like, you know, linking Kev's video instead of just yeah. the link without any thumbnail or anything. Mm. I know. That makes a lot of sense now when you say... Charon, there we go. Oh yeah, we have the same uh, spectacles. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. I'm starting, I'm starting to figure out that I think I, I think I need, I definitely need reading glasses now. Like I've, I've had, I've had such perfect vision my whole life and just recently I started noticing, like if I look at my phone and I look away, it takes longer to focus on the thing I'm looking at far away. I'm like, ah, oh, here it comes. <laughs> right. Actually, that is like, uh, when I told you, like, you know, I had, I had the same glasses as you, I couldn't find this one. It's been like an e I think one year since I wore this one. Really? And today, randomly, I think yesterday I got it right after I told you. Right. Okay. That I had, I had. That they're, they're not, they're not, not glad, identical. Blue. They're it's uh, blue. Well, yeah. I just got these because the prescription was slightly updated and I really didn't like the old ones. They were too heavy and weird. So okay. yeah, it's a nice. Uh, I wore these around London yesterday and it was really, really cool. Like just being able to see all the details. You, you don't, like when you don't use the glasses, but like you have them, you don't realize how bad your vision is until you've like worn them for like six hours or something. And then like you take them off and you're like, whoa, okay. I don't generally like use specs when I'm on calls, like, you know, when it's like, um length distance i just i just don't use it yeah but when it's like really far like when i have to watch the television then i have to use it or else it's wow. just going to be like five pixel radius blur <laughs> these were supposed <laughs> to be like hard. these are supposed to be for driving to start with so they are like kind of distance because i'm sure sighted but uh yeah I'm, I'm starting to i guess use them more around the house now anyway uh it's more like i mean you know the higher power you need it's like real-time depth of field with your eyes i was no. just thinking it was a random thought yeah like you can only see things which are really close to you but then everything else is blurred see but... through my eyes it's not gonna oh, make any no. difference it's like uh, just distorting yeah, yeah. they it's um like see what happened. yeah they're not that strong but they actually make a huge difference for me like i only noticed that my eyes were going weird in school in a maths class and for some reason like the teacher was using a whiteboard with like a yellow pen and i was like oh okay well the reason i can't read it is because it's just a stupid you know pen color um so it was all very blurry and i couldn't make sense of it and then i had a friend called taylor shout out to taylor 
I mean, he's not watching. Um, <laughs> but he had like his glasses. And whenever you try on people's glasses, it's always super blurry. But I tried his on and I was like, Whoa. oh no, oh, no. <laughs> I need glasses. Because suddenly everything was super clear. And I was like, oh, okay. Oh, you, all, yeah, yeah. you always have that one friend like whose glasses is like perfectly match yours. Yeah. And I had that one when I was in ninth standard. And that's when I knew I have to get glasses. I'll say for the people that, that are that are watching this that don't have glasses but do do a lot of computer work, I, I picked up years ago, my wife, um, she picked up for me these uh, gunner uh, screen glasses. They're basically like blue blockers. They block the blue light coming off the screen. Mm. And uh, my eyes thanked me for so long. I, I'd wear them at work because I'd be staring at these computer screens all day. And yeah. I think that was even back in the transition between CRT monitors and the LED mm. monitors. And it made such a difference. Like my yeah. eyes weren't, they weren't, I, I wasn't, you know, they weren't dry at the end of the day. They weren't, you know, painful. It was, it was awesome. They, they work really well. Is that the ones like that when you expose to sun, it, it changes to like a uh, black color? No, those are like the, the, the color changing transitions. Ones. These transitions. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, these are more like, they look yellow. Mm -hmm. I'll wear them. I'll, I'll wear them in the next time I have my face on camera next week. Um, and right, I'll show yeah. you. They're, they're, they look like they look like uh, like like the, the the glasses Bono from U two wears. Oh yeah, yeah. But they're kind of yellow tinted, and uh, and they're, they're they're really cool. And they actually they they block all the blue coming off the screen. So they're not good for like accurate color work. But if you're just modeling mm -hmm. or or doing stuff that doesn't re you know doesn't doesn't need color um then, then they're awesome to have on and believe me man your eyes thank you if you're if you're if you're modeling on that computer for like nine straight hours your eyes are gonna hurt so i use like the flux if you've ever used on mac they've got like this like flux app that you can download it's like a blue light filtering thing oh, so i'll yeah. set that like for when i'm working on my computer for like edits on a long time and i don't need to color grade anything um oh, cool. or i'm just doing animation or something i'll just have that on so i'm not staring into like a just white I'm light actually, all day. Like... I yeah, always I have that thing on, like, you know, even on Windows, it, you have that feature. When you yeah. go to notifications, it's called Nightlight. Uh, I mean, it's Nightlight. It basically makes your screen a little bit of yellow tinted, you know? And oh, that's cool. I, I think, I, I mean, it's always on for me. That's exactly why my colors look always wrong. Oh, shit. <laughs> I should change uh, it. Yeah, I have to toggle <laughs> it on and off when I'm doing color grading, but it's always oh, yeah. the same when you do toggle it on and off. Like, what if you're looking at it for hours and then you turn it off? It's just like you realize the, the luminosity change is so drastic. It's incredible how much brighter the blue light is on the computer. Oh my God. Uh, I'm always just yeah. like blinded initially when I'm looking at it when I turn it back on again. <laughs> this, yeah, uh, I like that. You like that. Like that scene of uh in, in Terminator Two where where Sarah Connor's holding onto the fence and the nuke goes off and all of a sudden she's like blown <sighs> oh away. Oh my god, that her. scene! That scene was <laughs> yeah. That scene was traumatic. <laughs> yeah, it so was. Apparently, I think someone said it was like the most accurate representation they'd seen. And that's kind of what made it unnerving. But like you oh. know everything, but but yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I think that's exactly why my colors look always wrong to my eyes when I look on different screens. Like, why does it look so different here? I mean, like, for example, you'll tweak the colors, right? For example, you give a blue tint to the shadows and warm tint to the... And when you look back with this filter, it looks so weird. Yeah, it's like the anti-Michael bay Fi filter. <laughs> yeah i used to have a friend um, that, that used like the, the the tinting apps for when it got late whenever they would send me like print screens of their desktop it'd be it would come over to my screen like it's just yellow and i'd be like okay yeah. <laughs> they're like oh yeah sorry i've got this thing on the breaking bad effect yeah the breaking yeah. bad effect oh my god they like i um i just i just Ooh. want to go to albuquerque to see if it really looks like that <laughs> yeah <laughs> is, really, is albuquerque just yellow <laughs> oh, you... I love it. Yeah, they do it to like distinguish between what's the U.S. and what's Mexico. So yeah. just like everything is just like super sepia and, and whatever it's like. It's in Mexico. I've seen so many memes about that. I just finished watching that series uh, last week. I'd never watched it before. I watched like the first couple episodes in one of my film classes in college, but never got around to watching it end to end. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. It's, it was. It's one of the best shows ever. It's a masterpiece. TV. It's so good. It really okay, is. I, um, and, and Better Call Saul as, as a follow up is is awesome too. It's just man. I've yet to watch that, and I've been meaning to watch. There's like the movie that came out too. I think it's called El Camino. Uh, it's just following Jesse post uh, the last episode of the last season. 
the the writers on Gerardo Turo. Yeah, man down. Uh, <laughs> now he's he's watching the episode. Now he's got to go and uh, <laughs> go and watch it. Uh, yeah, talking about film schools, um, I thought I'll just ask you, uh, James. So, what was the curriculum in film school? So I actually didn't go to film school. I went to just normal undergrad at uh, Princeton and my major is actually geosciences, but it was really flexible. So I was able to take like extra courses, like acting courses, film, TV, screenwriting courses. Um, but I guess, for example, for like a screenwriting course, um, there was one I did. It was like a TV writing course. Um, and I guess every week we would watch usually like the pilot episode of, you know, really famous show like Mad Men or uh, Transparent or Curb Your Enthusiasm or Breaking Bad. And then we would talk about, um, you know, what techniques they use, like what worked well for it, uh, what didn't work well, you know, how do they and uh, like introduce all the characters. And then we'd actually like start to write our own scripts too. So kind of throughout the course, we wrote uh, a TV pilot episode of our own, uh, which was really challenging because you have to come up with this thing from scratch in like less than 12 weeks um workshop it all and get it to like a finished you know Mm -hmm. depending on if you're doing a comedy or drama either like a a 30 page piece for comedy or like a more like a 50 60 page piece for a drama um and so that was pretty intense and then for other classes like the i did a documentary filmmaking one where we would watch an array of different documentaries uh both short long form medium and once again just kind of like talk through them uh there are a lot of ones that were just very niche like i'd never heard of before kind of more obscure films um pretty indie type stuff, international stuff as well. And just kind of work through it. Uh, I thought it was very useful though, because even though it wasn't always production-based, like some of the courses were production, like you're actually creating something throughout it. Like I did an animation course where we were making stuff every week. Um, But even there, like we were analyzing films. And I think that was really useful is just not just developing your own craft, but looking at what works and what doesn't work and and other people's Mm -hmm. work and um, just dissecting things on a, a deeper level than you typically would just watching a movie at the theater on your own with your friends. Um, and we would start to break down scene by scene stuff as well too. So you kind of, will just replay things over and over again and just look at each thing and, and just talk about all elements of it from the soundtrack to the, you know, the sound design, the VFX, uh, just camera movement, character positioning, dialogue, everything. You just talk through every aspect of it. So for me now, it's really helpful kind of going and doing my own productions because I kind of have that data set to focus yeah. on. I've got films that inspired me from those courses that I've bookmarked on my computer, short things as well, um, that I'll kind of reference as well if I'm trying to develop a certain technique for my own work that stuck out to me from my many watches of these things before. Um, yeah. So I thought that was really useful. I think it's also helpful to get on the other side of the camera too. So I, like I said, I did some acting courses as well. Um, so I now i guess have like a better appreciation for what actors and actresses need when they're being directed to so you want to know you know where you should be in the scene how your character should be playing you know how the the i don't know how you should be saying something even the pronunciation so it's helpful to uh have the perspective when you're a director as well when you're trying to coach these people through a scene or kind of work through that to have that background as well to be able to act it out yourself and know exactly how you want them to deliver the scene uh, for yeah. you as well. Mm-hmm. So I thought it was really useful. I, I think it's not for everyone, um, but you know, it's also certainly not cheap too to go to some of these schools. But uh, if you can swing it, I, I really do think it's a useful thing. I know a lot of people say like, oh, like, I don't know, film school is useless, like education beyond high school is useless. I really think it's what got me to where I am today. It was, was going to undergrad uh, and having all these experiences and just learning how to think, I think is the biggest thing. Even if you're not learning like a hard skill, always just like the, the thought process of doing research and understanding something on a deeper level, having really meaningful conversations is incredibly valuable. And I don't think you can put a price tag on that um, yeah. or really teach that any other way. Yeah. I agree. A, I've been like researching about film school, film schools has in mostly VFX and VFX colleges from for my higher education, which I thought mm-hmm. I'll choose in VFX. Uh, I'm kind of confused to choose which, <laughs> uh, I mean, it's not going to be in India for sure. I'm going to like come out of uh, to states probably. And, the U.S. Uh, yeah, uh, that's my plan. Oh, yes. I'm writing. My, I'm taking my L's next in 15 days. To be honest. Okay. Uh, I'm going to like um, go to write the IELTS exam, and then based on the score, I mean, I saw all the top colleges. The score is pretty decent, which is like do like up reachable uh, with whatever I know at the moment. 
So um, after that, I have to choose the college. Uh, I have to apply for like at least four or five and see which one I can get into. The one thing which I was completely scared was um, I'm going to be competing with people who have done art for the whole life. And I just started like prior two years or something. So I need to have like a really strong portfolio and motive mm. to get into it. So yeah. I'm taking time off of all the stuff, you know, my own. I let, Let's say I'm taking a freelance, uh, but then other than that, I'm not thinking what I am capable of doing, like what I want to do, but then look at a broader perspective of what can be done. Um, like, you know, if I had this opportunity to become a VFX artist, should I take it? If I take it, will I like it? So thinking of different career paths, because I have like, you know, I do want to become a 3D generalist. That's like my long-term goal. So, you know, I can start anywhere, but then specializing something in a, like, you know, in a VFX school is some, is uh, what I want to know. And then for every single, I mean, because it's masters, I can, I can only take one career. And mostly I'm a material artist. So I could take a material master class, master, like, you know, masters, but I don't think I need to. I mean, I, it, it, it might sound stupid, but then maybe if I work a little bit more on me, I might reach uh, the goal that I think for a material artist. So I, I'm mostly thinking of either VFX or a lighting artist, either mm -hmm. these two. So it's, it's quite. I'm bal I, I'm, I mean, you get it. Like, you know, I'm quite confused at the moment, but then I think I'll figure it out. It's like choosing a render engine. Like everything yeah. is good. Which one should I choose? <laughs> it's, I think a good problem to have. And I don't know if you should necessarily box yourself in so early on too, when you're just starting out, because you might not know what you really like. You might like a whole bunch of different things. And when you actually get on a production for like a bigger company, yeah. Um, you kind of see what works and what doesn't work. And unfortunately, sometimes you do have to choose earlier than you'd like uh, with these things yeah. and kind of box yourself in. Um, but yeah, it's nice. Uh, that's the good thing about a lot of these schools too, is they let you explore the different courses and you can yeah. kind of have a more generalist experience if you wanted to go that route, uh, just kind of sample from a whole bunch of courses, uh, beyond the specific track you're on, which is really nice. Yeah. I mean, mostly the, I mean, I was looking at all the catalog i mean most of the people say you can learn it all by yourself but then yeah i could but then i need the contacts to get into like production company like i did uh, i can i can learn but then i won't have the production experience so what college teaches is based like a university teaches like you know you to be ready for a production experience so they will yeah, basically make a simulated environment of production so that we can train and then send it to your production environment. So I thought maybe it's a good idea if I take up this opportunity because, you know, I'm still 21, so I still have a lot of time to choose a career. Like hmm. if I don't like, I mean, I still have the skill that whatever I learn in masters, I can still continue my YouTube and stuff. So oh, yes. I just want to explore now. So I thought it's a good idea for me to like go to uni, though most of people would say you can learn everything by yourself, but yeah. There's ways to learn stuff on the job too. Like I know some of these companies offer like apprenticeships or internships and stuff that you can do um, where it's like a little bit more higher stress, I guess, but not fully like into the production yet. But I think that's what the benefit of doing film school is too, because you can kind of make mistakes and not really have as many consequences for like not knowing something immediately and mm -hmm. kind of learning from it a bit easier instead of like being on high stakes production where you have like a turnaround of like a week or something on, on a production and you're trying to learn some new program or some new technique and it's just it's a lot harder. Um, so it's nice to kind of yeah. have that kind of cushion and, and kind of ease into it with industry experts teaching you uh, and kind of walking you and through it. And with almost like-minded people around you for the rest of two years or three years uh, yeah. uh, along the courses. So You definitely motivate your, each other and, and kind of form these study groups as well. Um, I definitely, you know, had people help me out with like my thesis projects and stuff that I'd work on for the courses. And you know, you help with theirs as well, too. And you kind of get weird experiences, like you're like a boom operator or something on someone's production or like, I don't know, doing the lighting design or helping them out and something that maybe is out of your comfort zone. But it's just little skills and things that you can kind of just pick up and maybe you, you find something they actually really like and you kind of pursue it more just kind of randomly. Mm -hmm. um, so which is always nice. I, I mean, I never thought that I'll even like touch Houdini anytime soon, but then uh, randomly out of nowhere, I was talking to Kev, I was talking to Curtis and I was like, 
I am doing Blender, but then it's going nowhere. Like, I mean, it's good enough. But then when I got reached out by a company for a VFX, like a VFX studio, uh, when they asked me, what do you know? I was like, Blender. <laughs> I don't know any other software. And they're like, you need more than that. You know that, right? I was like, I, I, I know that I need more, but then I never thought that I'll get this opportunity soon. So, so that's when I thought, okay, what else am I going to learn? So I thought, let's learn Houdini. Once I jumped into Houdini, my whole perspective of everything changed. Like literally two days, I started watching Houdini tutorials. But then the capacity and capability that are in my hands now, like broaden up all my perspective. I, I, I had so many ideas running through my brain. Like I can do this now. I can do that now. So it was just that one step that I took basically brought it like it's i was like a frog in a well i didn't know about the ocean before <laughs> something like that but that makes sense i like that yeah. so now i can explore the whole Good. ocean and maybe like a shark will, will come and eat me but whatever you get right yeah so it was like a mind-blowing um uh it basically i was grinding myself only with blender but then the output was very less, but now I have a lot of new equipments, basically. It was good. It's a whole new world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, um, we, yeah, I, I, did a, I did a video a while back, you know, like, um, is it worth going you to? You know what Yeah. I was watching that. Yeah, there was, it was, uh, I tried to make it very balanced, but it was still a bit controversial, but no, like, you know exactly like the result of that video. We kind of came to a few conclusions, which was like, the, the valuable things university gives you, one of the things that people overlook is the context. Because if you imagine the university as a whole is like a brand, you know, if you're going to uni, it implies things like it implies that you are dedicated to a certain degree, you know, because, you know, you've got to invest money and time and whatever into it. So if you're contacting someone and you're going to uni, there's an implicit context there. So we, we said that if you compare people like someone that does things only hobbyist who messages like an expert and someone who's going to uni and messages an expert, you know, asking for help. One of these things implies more of like a, a serious viewpoint, should we say? So I think the, the, the context alone, forgetting what you're even studying is, is something valuable. And then about like the whole kind of teaching a simulated production environment, um, we covered a bit, which was like when you're applying for jobs, um, do you need a degree you know is it more likely and it depends on like the scale of the business because like smaller businesses are more likely to hire generalist hobbyists who are more likely to take risks and stuff like that because they also need to take risks you know to kind of expand but for larger companies um it was like okay well we don't want to invest extra time into training someone so if we see that they've been to university we can make the assumption that they already understand the pipeline yeah and therefore we can make the assumption that we don't need to invest money into training them when compared to someone that's just hobbyist and stuff like that. So there's like implied things that are valuable that come from a university environment. But again, you know, there's, there's flip sides to all of that and it's not, not for everyone. It wasn't for me. So yeah, all important. Things. I mean, yeah. And that's totally fine. I think it is, it's good to you know what works and what doesn't work for you and, and the way you learn. Uh, some people do need that, you know, simulated environment and that, you know, the connections and stuff that come along with kind of working with you these people in this context as opposed to just kind of going it alone i guess more so learning it but i mean it's different and yeah the cost is a big issue too like you got to think about the investment that you're putting in in the front end and if that's going to pay off in the long end where you can actually get yeah. like a, a a job at the end of it you know hopefully you're ultimately leading to that um but it's it, it is a big uh, gamble initially i guess if you don't know the certainty of it yeah that's true that's there, true. there's um also something which I guess I'd call the creative paradox. I haven't really thought about this too much, so it's just going to sound like really sloppy as I'm saying it. But um, creative people, I think, statistically, are more open to experience than other people. I guess that's why they're creative or something. So you're more likely to be interested in multiple things, which already puts you in more of a generalist category by nature. But if you're a creative, you want to go into a creative line of work, but creative line of works are more likely hyper-specific things, especially if you're going to like larger jobs. So that's the paradox because you want to be like an open-minded person, but you also want to be a, like a specialist. And that's a very difficult thing to kind of go for. I think maybe easier for some people, like, like so personality dependent, but yeah. sometimes you have to kind of shoot yourself in the foot, like in that way to be able to get something that you need. I mean, maybe shoot yourself in the foot's a bad term, maybe a very discouraging term, but you, you get what I mean. Like 
if you know that you need to narrow down your skill set and like specialize in something then but then like you've also got to think of I don't know if there's a term for it, what, like the 90, 10, 90 versus 10% thing. Like, you were worrying about, like, competing with people, Charon. But if you look at an expert, like, someone could probably learn everything the expert knows, or, like, 90% of what the expert knows in a very short amount of time. Like, because, mm. you know, the, the majority of what you can learn can be done in a short amount of time if it's condensed and taught in the right way. But it's like, obviously, as you specialize in things, that extra 10%, especially like from an experience perspective it takes like a much longer time to build up yeah so that's why like i've always said to people you you know you can make some really really amazing artwork in blender in like a couple of days you know yeah. if you just fo follow the right resources you can be like an expert in quotes artist in a very short amount of time but you know it's about being able to adapt those skills as well like into new fields yeah. Like, as sure you can be an, ama an amazing artist at a very specific genre or very, using very specific tools in very specific ways, but if you don't have all yeah. that time invested in experimenting and trying different things, then how do you adapt that to yeah. anything else? Yeah. There's there's that like curve I forget what it's called, but it's like the um, experience versus uh, your perception of your knowledge of a oh, subject matter. Dun and it's like Kruger? when you're just starting out. What is it? The Dunning Kruger effect. Dunning Kruger. Right? Yeah, then that's what it's like. Immediately spikes up like big time in the beginning. It's like you think you're a master, but then like and as soon as you get a little bit further in, it just drops off, and then eventually, like really long down the line, it kind of peaks up again. But yeah. it's that that kind of same idea. It's like you you think that you know you've mastered something immediately, but it just really is that dedication to always learning and keeping the mindset that there's always more to learn as you're going mm. through with it, um, and kind of oh, as you're going just. Uh, Mm. yeah it's almost like a double belt it's like there's like an initial spike like a huge yeah. spike up like where you think you're a master after like a week um, <laughs> I, um oh yeah the wise uh, realize I'll, that i'll admit to it. being a bit um i don't really have a term for it not pe well, pessimistic when i'm um, looking at like yeah. some experts work someone will say ah you know this is so fantastic this person's made something amazing they're going to do so well but like especially if they're young and I'm not thinking about anyone in this community. And specifically, I'm thinking about like um, one person. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> but like we've spoken about child prodigies a lot, you know, yeah. like someone will do something amazing and everyone goes, wow, they're going to do so well. And I look at that and I go, no, we won't. Like we'll never hear from them ever again. Like when someone comes yeah. out of nowhere and does something amazing, it's it's a fluke, like statistically speaking. So like we were just talking about adaptability skills. If you haven't invested yeah. the time into kind of creatively thinking about that and also like this kind of ties back into a video i did about avoiding creative blocks a lot of the um, oh, yeah. way to avoid that isn't necessarily by changing your habits like i guess a lot of people think but the way you onboard information in the first place is the most important thing in my opinion because as you're onboarding information you want to be able to like link it to other pieces of information as you're learning it a lot of people learn things in isolation and then they go oh well how am i not coming up with new ideas you know it's just it's not melding together was because you never thought about it in that way to start with. You've put everything in boxes. Yeah, it's useful as well, like what, with the tutorials, kind of going back to way earlier when we were talking about like, you know, these step-by-step -step versus more process-based ones. I think the process-based ones are interesting in that way too, because when you're just doing step-by-step, -step, you're just kind of like looking through like a recipe and you're not able to like necessarily replicate that or, or kind of iterate on that on your own. So when it, whenever I, like I make some of these videos too, and, and I see you guys do it as well, just kind of encouraging people to play around with the software and mm -hmm. see what they can do, like even like pause the video, like just, Stop the video here and then just go through and, and just experiment and see what you can do. I think that's the best way. It's that struggle aspect of it. Yeah. You're kind of hitting walls and, and trying to learn how to adapt around the problems as opposed to just, you know, reading through like a list of, okay, step by step, I do this and this and this. Because that's what really makes you a master is being able to, you know, adapt those skills that you've learned to new situations and not necessarily need to be relying on on a crutch always for it. Um yeah, you know, nothing wrong with checking back in if you've forgotten something or like learning some new technique. But you know, being able to then apply what you've already learned in new ways is, I think, what is very useful in that regard. It is. That's the crutch too of of um of, of visual effects in particular. That's why, you know, I, I, a lot of a lot of facilities and and I was I was on a panel um not on the panel I was watching a panel and 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 interacting on um on getting jobs in the visual effects industry post pandemic especially or during the pandemic or whatever. Um, but that was that was a moot point. It really comes down to, and these were recruiters I was talking to. Uh, it comes down to your reel is number one, and I think you know credit list is is definitely key if you're going into entertainment. 
but they want to know that you can sit down. Number one, you can sit down in that seat and start producing almost immediately without a lot of handholding. Because if if a senior artist has to take their time to to uh, to to help you out, you know, constantly, then that's that senior artist is not you know they're billing out at a certain rate. You're billing out at a certain rate, and their their billing is just all messed up. They don't want to be have to take that time to do it. Secondly, they want to know that you can problem solve, and and I can I can I can definitely talk to this doing this this work for so long i would say like 70 percent of my time is troubleshooting yeah like, absolutely like i'll mm -hmm. I'll create stuff and it'll be awesome and i'll be like why the heck is this not working what, what this worked like 80 times previously and now it's not working and i have to go and troubleshoot and like i i can't like just if, if i'm just like following a tutorial and showing somebody look what i did from this tutorial that doesn't that doesn't tell an employer that you can problem solve and when mm -hmm. you sit in that seat, you're gonna be, you're gonna have to, you're expected to problem solve. It's just part of the job. It sucks, but it's the truth. So, university is cool because you can, you can play around, and you can problem solve. But you don't need to go to university to get a job in visual effects. You just need a really strong reel, yeah. and to prove, to prove to the people that you can sit there and do the work. Yeah. With, with yeah. the real too, with a, a quick tip with that as well, like they also recruiters want to know like what aspect of the work you did too. So, I mean, animation oh, yeah. in most cases is very much a team sport. Like, you know, you're handing off different scenes to people. Someone's doing the texturing, someone's doing the lighting and, and shading, someone's doing the, you know, simulations. You know, it'd be very specific when you do make your reel. Like if you post this like beautiful completed scene, they'll be like, did you do everything about this? Like maybe you just did the animation, maybe you just did the rigging or whatever. So that's also important to kind of clarify as well. I've, I'm always asked that if like whenever I was interviewing for jobs before taking this one at NASA, they were always asking like, oh, you know, what aspect of this was yours? You know, or what did you kind of pull from other people? Exactly. And so, so it's definitely key to, to note in your in your reel what you did. Don't take credit. Never, never. That's like the number one sin in no, this in this huge in this industry is you never take credit for something you didn't do. That that just, I mean, if you have any ethics at all, you're not going to do that anyway. So it's not even. A should go without point. saying, but I mean, it does happen. You know, and yeah. Oh yes. Ninety nine percent of people listening to this are not going to fall into that camp anyway. They're they're you know yeah. mostly ethical people. They're not. Everyone's gonna individual that. usually. That's a blender. Yeah. <laughs> like I said my uh, exactly. my first job was uh was was uh, I got it with um with somebody else's stuff. So, uh, you know, ethics aside, I, I, a friend of mine. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, nice. I, uh, what a way to come in. Yeah, he did some cool motion design. And I was trying to get a job, and he's like, "I was like, oh man, look, we worked on this together and stuff. Can I, can I borrow some of it to try?" And he said, "Yeah, go for it." So at least I asked the guy. But, but yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm I mean, shady. This is like That's Joey fun. trying to learn French one day before. Um, you know? Oh yeah, France. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> man, we had a, actually. We had a, oh, percent of our stuff on this, and claim on this topic uh it's something interesting i just learned um because uh I, with, with what i've got going on because i got um so i got headhunted to work on this feature film with paramount um and i didn't have any yeah. previous experience with animated feature films at all um and the uh the thing that got me the job was um that i had stuff on my youtube channel right that was uh, well, two things. One, I was using Blender, and they yeah. really wanted somebody that was using Blender. And the other thing was um, I had short films on my YouTube channel. And mm -hmm. they were looking for somebody uh, that you know could tell a story um, and could put a sequence together and could think in terms of sequences. And that was another really kind of, I don't know, it was a good tip because it was like, uh, you know, since I've been on the film, like, you know, we've, we've looked to, to bring on other people as well um, into working in the previous department. And working in previous specifically, like they're looking actively for people that can tell a story using a sequence and go, all right, you know, this is this, um, you know, not just thinking in terms of shots or uh, some cool, like technical part of Blender, but like, how do you string stuff together uh, into mm -hmm. some kind of narrative cohesion? Um, I thought that was really interesting um, and useful information. Um, That's really know. interesting. It's usually kind of like a, a cog in the wheel on a feature film, right? Like you're not I mean, that's usually the director that's that's guiding the whole thing. Storyboard artist, director going on the previous mm -hmm. stuff. Um, but that's really interesting that they want somebody who has that understanding. And I, I mean, I think that's important. I don't downplay that at all. I think that's that's wonderful to have. Um, you know, you're certainly talented. I've seen your, your YouTube stuff. So thanks. Um, it's it really interesting to see that, <laughs> that they're looking for that. That's uh, yeah, that's really it was it really is really cool. cool. And I've, I've been surprised, too, because I've, I've purposely never worked in film and features uh on a big features because of not wanting to be a cog in a wheel i've always been afraid of that kind of getting stuck in a job like that 
Part um, of me too. I've always stayed in commercials and stuff because you know, it's fast turnaround and turning stuff out. But um, you know, the experience has actually been quite different to what I expected. Like when I my first week on the job uh, was, you know, they said, "Okay, read the script," and then I read the script and I said, "Okay, um, this is your scene. Here's the scene. Um, we've got some rough boards, but you don't have to follow the boards. Here's the characters. Here's the location. Go for it. Like, give us wow. the sequence." And I got to put the sequence together and like, you know, figure out the shots and try all this stuff out. And, you know, my supervisor collaborated a lot and, you know, came up with this whole interpretation of this part, you know, and then I got to present it to Ron Howard and like, Hey, what do you think? And, you know, it was, it was nuts. Cause I just, I kind of thought I'd be, you know, down on the rung and this sort of, you know, but I'm in this really tiny team and we're doing really cool stuff with in blender for the previous and everyone's losing their minds at how, fantastic blender is for it and um all these maya users are just like they're just falling mm. over themselves like look this is great <laughs> like this is so easy you mean i can just do it like this this is all it takes <laughs> it's great yeah. yeah when i jumped maya to blender i, I was just blown away and i, I came in at 2.79 i was like what and then, then 2.8 came around i was like oh <laughs> i don't know why do i need to touch maya again i, I mean yeah. it's just it's industry standard when i have to use it i have it but oh, so, man. So, so hold on chris you got to present to ron howard um, just yeah. around a question. Did he happen to be, to be wearing a cap? Um, oh gosh. Yes. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Just, 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 just wondering, just wondering. Yeah. Were you on a video call with him? Very consistent. Oh yeah. Yeah. Everything's we're in like mega lockdown here in Sydney. Uh, yeah. he was in the UK, but uh, so mm -hmm. it, was, it was funny. I had, I had five minutes. It was, I had five minutes in the meeting and there were like 30 people on the call. You know, you have like the whenever it's a call with him it's like there's just everyone there like it's the 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 you know producers of the film it's the um the owner of the company it's the um, like you know an army of pas taking notes they all have their cameras turned off you know and it's just oh, the yeah. people that are just waiting to meet with the cameras on and, and yeah it was wild because you know i was so nervous and i <laughs> it was like okay uh it's chris's turn um present your sequence <laughs> and so i showed my sequence and i'm sweating all the day <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it was it's great but um i felt really lucky i think that my first go at this is with a director like ron howard because it was like he's probably like, the nicest director in all of hollywood you know like he he's, has he's that reputation yeah very different experience with, like james cameron you know <laughs> quite a bit i knew one guy who oh never I knew one guy who worked directly for james and never got yelled at and uh, that was his calling card was i never got yelled at by james cameron <laughs> wow, that's, a, that's an impressive but ron, ron Ron Howard, yeah, he's he seems to be the most chill. Like every, whatever I hear a story about Ron, he, he just everybody just loves him. So, yeah, I, I think I gave one story on here. It was like he was the only director we bumped into when we did like a family trip at Leavesden, and we, I don't think we were supposed to be in there, but like we walked past him and he starts. He was like, "Hey, the whole gang's here," <laughs> and he was just like yeah. super friendly. <laughs> so yeah, he's yeah. he's good. Yeah, yeah. people like him. Oh, Rush, okay. Inferno, okay. Oh my yeah, god! I love so many goes, movies goes, of him. He goes back to he goes back to uh, nineteen seventy seven. Even yeah, to um the uh, Opie on um, oh, man, yeah. what was that? Happy days. The, uh, yeah, it was even before Happy Days. It was um, oh, the Andy Griffith show, wasn't it? That's right. That's what that's what that's from. Yeah. Yeah, he was a kid on that. He's been he's been around here forever. Yeah, he's got a lot of experience. Oh my god. As an yeah. actor, he was like 1956. What? Yeah, that's impressive. Yeah, he's a little God. kid. Yeah, he's um, and his daughter was uh, is directing episodes of Mandalorian. Yeah, she's yeah. doing well. What's Bryce, her name? She's doing Bruce, really well. Yeah, Bryce Dallas. Bryce Dallas. Dallas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's apparently really nice too. Yeah, I know somebody who directly, 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 uh, directly had interfaced with her, and she was really sweet. That's wow. great, though. I love that. I love that story. So, so you, you, I, I'd be nervous too. I mean, oh my god, like pre presenting directly to the director of a feature. You're like, mm, exactly. for a second, I was thinking he was Ryan Howard, who who played a character in Office. I was like, oh right. Oh, yeah. yeah, another guy I really liked is Justin Lin. Um, he's another director that seemed really, really cool. I was I was on a film shortly with him, and uh, he was just he was just so down to earth. He was like he was he directed like Fast and Furious three and then he directed another another show called Finishing the Game, and um it was just it was awesome like I was on that set and he was just the coolest guy. It's it's always nice when the director the guys like running the thing are super cool because it just it sets this vibe that just you know everybody's happy 
and even people that are stressed are happy and it's just a better environment than than fear yeah, yeah trickles totally. down. it's nice it does it really does it makes a huge difference it's, it's a very mixed bag in the industry so it's very nice when you do get a good one <laughs> yeah i know people have jumped out of visual effects because they just couldn't stand it anymore yeah and fair enough like you know no one should be treated the way a lot of people get treated in the film industry yeah. yeah they definitely shouldn't there was there used to, was oh man back in like i think 2003 or 2004 there was this uh website that popped up called vfxhell.com and it was up for maybe like two weeks before oh, attorneys no. from everyone everyone sick their attorneys on it and took it down but <laughs> oh Jeez. man it was like if you just took the worst of a glass door and like put an entire like website thread together about the visual effects industry it was just insane yeah. i i just Man, I learned so much about, you know, and you always read stuff like, all right, this person has a bone to pick with somebody. But then like the stuff that wasn't where it's just like, you know, I was, it, the stories were just outrageous. I wish it's like a subreddit that. for it now too. I've seen it like r slash VFX. Sometimes like and a lot of it's just people posting about VFX related things. But then like last year there's, uh, I forget what, what company it was, but there was a company going under and they just like laid off everyone. And I think there are a lot of like really angry posts on there just kind of exposing the work culture. Yeah, there was. I, I'm not going to mention who, what company that was, but they were in Vancouver, and I don't think they're allowed back in Vancouver anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not. I, I, I just just in in a, in a, in, a, in an ethical and professional sense, I won't mention who that is. But there there was, and it was it was a storm. And you know, it, you've heard you heard these things for years about about that 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 issue. So it wasn't a, it wasn't a surprise to people, but you know, I'm um I, I don't think I'm allowed to say like a lot of stuff but they um they're, they're definitely doing a lot more like a kind of what's the right term for it not pr type lessons or like uh, behavioral lessons and stuff you know like the kind of introductions oh what you should or shouldn't do at a workplace and all that you know yep. then forcing people to go through it they're doing a lot more of that now um yeah so yeah i'm in i'm in uh I'm in, I'm in industrial and we have to do ethics training all the time. It's, mm. it's like once a year it comes around it's like, oh, ethics training time, take an hour away. And oh man. On a it's slight proof. segue slash side note, it's, uh, it's nice to see you guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Likewise. Likewise. Well, it's been quite some... Actually, I can't see you, but yeah. I just see your nice logo. See you. Yeah. yeah sure, sure, <laughs> exactly. I, uh, I haven't had a shower yet this morning, so I'm a bit. Ew. <laughs> no, oh, <joking>. What? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah. Oh, beautiful! Uh, there it is. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, I would. I would show mine if I had a camera right the now. The most youngest person. I'd have. I'd have such better subs on YouTube if I did my you know, tutorials like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I often wonder too if I showed my face if I'd have more if, if you know my growth would be better on on YouTube. I'm rounding about eighty thousand now, and I'm like, I wonder if I showed my face if I'd push a hundred. I I'd, I'd yeah, love man. to know uh, what comments you'd get on the on the background if you use the same background. I think that would be yeah fun. yeah people yeah, are like what the I, hell are you doing <laughs> i know live from chuck e cheese exactly <laughs> no, live from chuck e cheese i should i should do i should i should do the audio i should do the video portion of the from oh, chuck wow. e cheese that'd be hilarious oh my gosh then i'd probably get some youtube takedown or something chuck e cheese would be pissed or whatever I'd be like, they, no. right. they, they might be um i don't know if you're like in touch with the youtube drummer a while back there was a YouTuber Shane Dawson. They're in a bit of like of trouble now, but they they did this whole like conspiracy uh, theory ser series, and there was one about Chuck E. Cheese reusing like pizza slices from other people's orders. Oh so, my so, God. so so they went in there and they, they 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 said like as a disclaimer, like you know this probably isn't true, but they were like, look, they're, they're so uneven, and like the ones they got were uneven. But like it just looks so much like they're recycling it. So I think they got really angry about it and started like suing that's, um, oh, that's a crazy that claim pizza yeah yeah it is the worst pizza it's horrible it's horrible it really is like they could totally about it, right? they, they could do better <laughs> could do better but, step it up chuck e cheese so, yeah. exactly. i had my birthday out, there once and they misspelled my name on the cake they wrote jane's j-a-n-e-s it's what? like what is that what? <laughs> whose name is jane's that's not even a name yeah not even a name <laughs> It sounds like Janice. Oh my yeah. god. So annoying. <laughs> the man they call James. <laughs> wow, that's James. not even a name. It's yeah. James. They had it like printed on like a big sign above the table where the thing was supposed to be. 
It's like, oh, what? Yeah. Like, really? Talking like, about like, that, think about though. that for a second before we print it on a banner. Like, it was my father's birthday, and then we ordered a cake, and it said fifth birthday instead of fiftieth birthday. Wait, fifth? Yeah. Yeah. Here's my father. He's five years old. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I, I was laughing so hard. That is it's like, Dad, look at you. You're so young. <laughs> it's a leap year birthday. In the new light, uh, we need. Uh, this is the first time Chris has been here. So, Chris, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Chris. It's uh, six thirty in the morning here yeah. in sunny Australia, where we have lots and lots of Delta. Uh, so, I've been living indoors for the past six months of my life. Oh my god! Um, I, I do a YouTube channel called C Bailey Film. We make sci-fi mm -hmm. cool stuff, all Blender, all the time. It's nice. Yeah. Go check it out. Give me lots of subscribes. If you could subscribe twice, do it. That, that'd be appreciated. And uh, and I have a Patreon that's far more important than all these guys. So <laughs> <laughs> drop whatever you're subscribed to and join mine. Thanks. There we go. You oh, heard the oh. man. <laughs> 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 oh, wow. Uh, that's that's what happens. I don't do intros this early. It's a bad idea. You know, you just say dumb stuff. And you Is it cool over there? Is it cool? It's it's supposed to be, but global warming's kind of screwed that up. We're uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> we've been having like summer days every day. It's August, right? So it's like supposed to be the dead of winter here, and uh, it's so hot, so hot. It really makes me nervous for summer because bushfires and stuff yeah. can be nuts. This oh, year. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Here too. Last summer, but mm. we're we're coming out of summer now. But uh, we're we're you know the fires are raging. raging. It's it, yeah, they're raging. We're, I hope we get some it's rain so this year. It's no. raining here all the time now. This is good. I love rain. Yeah. On schedule. On mm -hmm. Yeah. Watch Category this. four hurricane hitting Louisiana right now. That's exciting. Oh, oh yeah. Hey. Yeah. What's it called? Right on the anniversary of Katrina as well, which is interesting. Oh gosh. Is it the anniversary of Katrina? That brings back the trauma. Yeah. Wow. I went down to the, to the anniversary. Cleanup. After that happened, I did like this Never big volunteer thing and was down there for like a week and actually oh, wow. cleaned out uh, flooded houses and stuff. And uh, it was pretty horrific. Like, but yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that was insane. I remember that. I think the place where I live is the most safest place on this planet. It's all surrounded by mountains. Whatever has to happen, it has to happen if there's a volcanic <laughs> eruption and there's no volcanic <laughs> mountains here. So. It's all That's good true. for me. It's one of the yeah, best. Yeah. I, I also feel pr pretty safe here in the UK. And like we, like as some of you know, on the server, we've been trying to move. But I, I, I keep saying to my parents, just so long as we have elevation, because we have elevation here, and as the water level rises, um, a lot, a lot of England gets flooded, like when when the rivers break and stuff like that. Yeah. But like mm -hmm. if we have elevation, we're fine because there's like there's nothing predatory on this island, so long as there's no <laughs> wars. We were good, so fine. Yeah, as long as twenty feet above sea level, you're fine. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm you, all, you, you all make uh, what is that? Uh, horses with wood, right? Yeah. Who's kind of? the question directed to? Yeah, anyone like anyone. Oh, we're, we're brick. I made yeah. mine with hay, actually. Cardboard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of Perfect. the Australian way. <laughs> A lot of like uh, plaster and drywall and stuff in there uh, too. Yeah. Materials uh, that typically uh, get kind of messed up. I was a room um, thick. Like I was already thick because it's supposed to keep in all the heat. So yeah. now that the world's been getting hotter, it's not very convenient. So, uh, it's, oh, yeah. it's all brick walls. Like it's proper stone cemented. That's it's not better. Concrete. That's way better than what they do now. So here in the US, there's a lot of these like housing developments that just kind of get thrown up over the course of like a year. And they just all are these like kind of cookie cutter houses that are pretty cheap materials in general, just like a lot of this cheap wood or yeah. I don't know, all kinds of like composite materials that they'll just kind of throw up. And it, they're just like so easy to flood if they get hit by anything, just easy to crumble, get water damage and stuff. And it's just they're really poorly made. The insulation is yeah. terrible. Yeah, One we, thing yeah. that you can see here is like, you know, you won't have many fire alarms anywhere in any house because right. there's less wood. I mean, furniture is wood and maybe closets, but other than that, everything is rock solid. <laughs> wow. Like, James, what you were saying about the building materials, though, because um, like yeah. here, here it's all thick walls and brick and like very like you can knock it. You can't hear anything on the other side. When we go to Florida, because we've got a place there, 
Uh, it's exactly what you describe. Like, the walls are yeah. hollow, like, pretty much. So when I'm laying in bed, I can hear everything that's happening outside. If you knock on the walls, it sounds hollow, and it's like, oh, this place feels like paper, you know? Yeah. It's very right. different. Yeah, it's, it's it really is. Like here at the end of the day. Very similar. Because, <laughs> yeah. right? like, the weather's kind of nice all the time, you know, in theory, and so they don't do much insulation and stuff. It was funny. The other day we had a guy checking out and going to renovate a bathroom or something, and we're talking about the window. We're like, oh, you know, we'll make sure it's secure. You know, if we do this, you know, it's, it's kind of easy to open. And he said, look, guys, he said, if anyone wants to break in, all they got to do is take the siding off your house and just kind of <laughs> claw yeah. through the wall. Because yeah. that's all you got here. Oh, yeah. no, we didn't we didn't feel great after that conversation. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, thanks. <laughs> Very nice. I mean, I see a lot of people like punching the wall and breaks like what? And then I. Oh, yeah. Just, just break like... right through the drywall. It's like just a. <laughs> piece of cardboard on this it's just like nothing yeah i mean it's easy to like break into houses then right isn't it that's a more right. what are you, what are you planning <laughs> yeah i'm not, I'm not yeah. planning any anything I'm questions just, i mean it kind of looks suspicious if you look at that but i'm not i'm just educational research purposes sure okay. yeah how uh, to build an atomic bomb. Yeah, as soon yeah. as as soon as airplanes start flying again look out <laughs> yeah oh, exactly <laughs> Uh, I'm so happy we don't have flying cars yet. Could you imagine the way people drive but them in the air? Yeah. Uh, have to be probably. automated. I mean, it's probably. Yeah. It's like a Tesla. Yeah. The, yeah. the the reason I don't drive is because of other people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm so happy when I work from home and I don't have to commute because people are just nuts. Especially yeah. in LA. But, I mean, you guys have these like six lane highways. It's just like people are weaving in and out in there. It's just oh, yeah. crazy. Six lane parking lots. Yeah, yeah that's what they are. They're, so. yeah. yeah, but then people yeah, are trying to be aggressive and like driving on the shoulder, like whatever past you, and like that's what's causing the traffic. It's like if we just stay in our lanes, guys. Like you don't need to be like weaving in and out. Just like stay in the lane. So reasonable, I know. There. It's like, it's like yeah, we think that'd be light. easy enough. We uh, had a we yeah. had a guy here. Um, we had a guy here that uh last I think it was like two years ago before the pandemic was like gunning it on the on the side. Traffic was at a standstill because of an accident. And uh, and he started. He just decided I don't have to deal with this, and starts you know going on the on the shoulder and and gunning it. And uh, he had to stop short, and wasn't wearing a seatbelt. Went through the windshield and flew up onto one of the one of the road signs. And he was like hanging. His body was hanging on the road sign. They had to like go and and take him down. He was dead, you know. Oh, but uh, yeah, like that's how nuts this, it is. It's insane. That happened in L.A. recently. Yeah. This was about two years ago, I think before the pandemic. <sighs> Oh my God, that's yeah. I mean, this, this is the second time. This guy had been warned before to, you know, to, to be a better driver. He's like, yeah, whatever. Uh, Dalvin like, awards. Right, well, this is yeah. the second time. Uh, yeah. I think Kev started a story Insane. and immediately escalated immediately to a death. Yeah, yeah. I was not expecting it's that. Just, <laughs> it's <getting> dark. <laughs> wow. Speaking dark. of dark, uh, just out of curiosity, na national poll here. And we have a few countries represented. Do people around you? In your area, do they talk about the pandemic in the past tense yet? Yeah. Oh no, for us, it's still very much in it. I felt yeah, like in okay. the summer, it was like kind of in the past. Like, oh, we're over. Yeah. I'm, I I live in the east coast of the U.S., uh, but I was out in California this summer, and I felt like when I was out there in California, everyone's like, "Oh yeah, like it's summer vacation." No, it's hot girl summer. We're getting outside. We're doing fine. You know, the pandemic's over. But then now the Delta's kind of crept back in. Uh, yeah, you guys are it's, to deal with that now. The pressure's there again, especially now I'm back on the East Coast. Uh, most people here are vaccinated, so it's been you know a little bit safer feeling. I feel like a little bit more confident about it, but still wearing masks indoors. And I'm a little bit nervous about the fall coming up uh, because mm -hmm. you know it's harder to be outside, uh, dining outside, being outside with friends uh, as the temperature is cool. So mm -hmm. yeah, we've got a couple breakthrough infections and stuff. It's it's been a little bit freaky. So I, I still feel like we're very much in it. Um, so it's a little bit nervous. Yeah. And Curtis, you're saying that they talk past tense? Yeah. Since Freedom it's, Day? <laughs> it's, um, yeah, because we'll say stuff like, oh, during the pandemic or during the lockdown. Like, it, like it's yeah. it's not now. Because, I mean, like, we went out yesterday up to London again. And like, going into museums and stuff, they, they, they say, oh, a mask is advisable, but it's not, you know, anything. And then you go mm -hmm. in and there's, like, almost no one wearing a mask. And, like, it's just yeah. exactly how it was. Um, So... Gosh, I, I long for that. Yeah. Be... <laughs> I, I appreciate the, the the safety measures, though. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely like a hyper paranoid, uh, terrified kind of. You know, I, I I'd wear two masks to the shops 
kind of guy. So, you know, but right. um, I'm just looking forward to it when it's all over one day. What, but yeah, it's funny. I noticed I was listening to a day. podcast the other day and it was, they were talking about it in the past tense. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what yeah. uh, okay. Well, what kind of mask do people wear then? Like, what's your everyday? Do you have like a uh, custom Most people or? just use the, like usually, kind of uh, so. Yeah, I do the blue mostly. We got some in fives the other day, so I sported uh, it. And the, the other day when it was really bad where we were, we were in this like kind of in you know, a bit of a flare moment in our local area. And so I I did the blue and then I did the in five. Oh, okay. I couldn't breathe. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Had to, had to back off a little bit. I rarely go outside on anything, but then whenever I go out, I use N95. Sometimes. I think. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what I use. I should get uh, a nice cloth like, one with the blender logo on it. You know? well, yeah. Actually, right? Like I, I mean, use a couple uh, of those sometimes as cloth ones. Merch. My dad got this um really nice um uh, ma- colors of nice. masks. I've got, I've got one like that. Yeah. That's about it. That's, that's and cool. one was jeans, right? Like one was completely <laughs> jeans. So whenever I wear it's a jeans, ninja. I just put this. It's a cool like streetwear now, seeing the fashion sense with it. Like yeah, I, you see these yeah. clothing companies like selling masks that are like themed with the clothes that you can wear. It's like this like yeah. hype beast oh. kind of thing to it. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. It's like this punk, I don't know, crypto or uh, whatever it is, like cyberpunk, whatever kind of feel to it. Some yeah. of the stuff. I yeah. think even Teespring is doing like a YouTuber merch where you can put stuff on it as well. So I thought about it, but yeah. I, I didn't go through with that. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> my dad did this thing where he took a picture of his face Too and like friendly. so you see his mouth oh, like on the masks it's like yeah. so weird looking oh god yeah, that's, that's, I, I wanted to get one that just said well if i lived in america i would have gotten one that said i'm wearing this for you yeah the, the united states is a i don't even want to get into it it's so crazy i feel for you guys i know it's hard it's so yeah crazy. like if you if you look at like where the pandemic is over well, it's like it's like Florida and Texas, but they also have the highest case numbers, and the ICUs are all full. But the pandemic's mm-hmm. over. Like I don't, I just don't get. I, I know why it's all. I know why, but I'm like just not even. It's to point of contention. It's like guys, there's a deadly virus out there. It might not kill you, but it will kill somebody you know. If you know, and just yeah. yeah. I don't know. Like I, I'm fully vaccinated. It's like I, I wear the mask, you know, to protect other people. If I potentially had it, you know, it's just like. That but sign I, of respect for for others, you know, around you, and not just being so selfish and, and just foregoing the mask. It's such a, a simple thing to do. You think more people would be able to do it, but it's so simple. I, I hate wearing a yeah. mask, but I'll, I do it. I do it a for other people, and b. I mean, you know, N95 does kind of it does limit the amount of virus particles you get in you. So, I mean, if you take a full blast of 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 the virus particles, you're you know, your your chances of getting really sick just increase tenfold if you just get a few virus particles in you your immune system is probably going to take care of that you know so why not do what you can to limit the amount of exposure you get yeah. even if the mask doesn't fully stop it limit how many virus particles get into your system it's just it, but it's just the, there's such a it's like it's like it's like we're full of a country of teenagers that just never grew up there's so much machismo to it i think and it kind of harkens back to the story you're just talking about with the guy with the seatbelt it's like the same thing happened when seatbelts were introduced too people are like reluctant to wear them because like oh i don't need to have this protective measure for me it's just like it's you know if it doesn't like it it doesn't do its job until it does its job you know it's it's like when Mm -hmm. at one moment when you're exposed to it or like you get in an accident or something it's useful. You know, it could save your life, could save the lives of other people around you. It's just like, you don't know when that's going to happen. Um, so especially when it's such a risky situation right now with stuff spiking everywhere, you know, yeah. it could randomly strike you when you're just like, let your guard down once. Uh, just like if you get in an accident randomly and you're not wearing your seatbelt, you know, just let your guard down once. It could be yeah. fatal for, for you or others. It's just like having that protective measure, I think, is incredibly important. Yeah, yeah I heard that people are rejecting masks as well, but never looked into it. So- Okay. There, there's yeah. There's a concerted effort to get people to hate masks. There is a con- if you look at you look at Twitter. There's a concerted effort, and there are definitely the same people that keep rallying against it. It's the same messaging. All the, but it's it's unified. Okay. I think it's 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 happening for a reason. I, but it's so stupid. Like it's such an easy thing to do. Just put the mask on your face. Go, oh, yeah. it's a face. You're wearing a face diaper. <laughs> All right. Well, now I'm just starting to see these. You know, I'm starting to see stories a, about these people. It's a chin people diaper are... when you when you're wearing it. You, you've got it off your mouth. You know, it's just hanging. Exactly. There. Yeah. It's a chin diaper. Like, oh, such a big cup to you. I hate that. Or it's like people that wear them like this with their nose out. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like completely defeats the purpose. Yeah, that's um, so funny. It's, it's like it's because it's um it's all wrapped up in ideology now. 
you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's exactly. It shouldn't have had to ever gone that way, but it's politicized. Yeah. And, but everything becomes politicized, you know, yeah. especially when you've got low social cohesion. It's like it, if you've got that going on, then good luck. It's just sort of that stuff is going to happen at right? anything that is mandatory. Anything. And it doesn't matter what it's doing or how good it is for you or how bad it is for you. It's like people are going to pick sides on it. And if it's suddenly, okay, that guy says that I've got to wear a mask and that guy believes the things that I hate. That means I identify mask wearing with those beliefs and I'm not going to do it because I don't want to associate with that. And people are exactly. so ingrained in those thought patterns that you, you can't get out of it. You know, it's sort of it becomes so tribal. Um, and when we're so spread out too, I mean, we're not really interfacing really much with people in person now. So stuff is just mm -hmm. able to be kind of filtered through whatever you interact with on social media or just kind of saw something post come up or of course, Whatever, that was you're not actually able to before too. Yeah, like, it's only been magnified. I feel like now that everyone's so spread out and that Cambridge you know, Analytica yeah. thing was pretty yeah. eye opening. Oh yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, that was hugely eye opening. That was very uh, broad. Uh, um, broad boundary got... topics we hit on in this, this talk. <laughs> Don't worry, we, yeah. it's always been this way. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, always it been kind of this way. Around. But then I think today's right. was one of the most. Um, longest conversation after a long time. I've never oh, wow. seen you yeah, guys up at this hours. Time. Yeah, since um <laughs> Chris, since since you jumped in, I, I decided to leave it running a bit longer just to get give some time for you as well. Thank you. So, Chris, so we, yeah. we can let's go for fifteen more minutes. Come on, let's do yeah, it. Do can, ours. You can try, yeah. Smash the two. <laughs> you can try. Yeah. You can but, bat later. But Paris, like nothing fine. is gonna be Aaron's fourteen hour like Oh Oh, oh wow! Yeah, oh, have, have any of you watched all that all the way through? No, no, I of did. It, all of it. I did. It was like an yeah, ambient actually, music, you know, his voice. It, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. like one of those like I don't know, lo-fi beats, chill hip hop to listen slash study exactly. to like his soothing Aaron, voice. Aaron, that on. man, Dale, just yeah. like chill. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. I haven't watched all of it. No, I've, I've gotten a decent way through it, but and then I, I gave it's one it, of yeah. the best resources I think. Like, look, like. Same see how many struggles. views he's gotten on that thing like yeah there's a exactly. lot of people that have you know i think if you know it's i don't know how many may reach the end but yeah. i think there's a lot of people that have bookmarked it like me and go oh, i need to go yeah go back save for later five minutes we should save for later exactly. we should ask him what the what his watch retention stats are on that because i want to see the graph <laughs> yeah, yeah it would be really interesting uh, have you guys yeah. checked out his new course mm -hmm. uh, i haven't yeah. seen it yet yeah. oh yeah, geometry notes one not yeah, yet, yeah, yeah the one yeah. that aaron just put out yeah I have to really, like, really timing on his part. Is it Spurchak one that he's working no, no, on? No, he's working on uh, Geo Nodes. Right now, he's working on Geo Nodes. Like he worked on Geo Nodes. Now he's working on his Spurchak course. I want him to do like, some woodworking sorry. tutorials. <laughs> oh yeah, he's pretty amazing yeah. at that as well. Like he's having a tree think... with Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I I just up to that so fast. <laughs> oh man, that'd be so great. He would like blew up just by cutting tree. He would. If you make a new channel, I mean, <laughs> I, would, I, would, like... I, would, I would subscribe to that. And I would immediately have to move out and out of LA just so I could get like a craftsman home, so I could afford a craftsman home and be like, all right, now I can yeah. do woodwork. <laughs> Live in the woods somewhere. Yeah, yeah I'd come up in the woods. Aaron's gotten like so many interesting comments about his voice, and I wish I could remember one of the, one of the funnier ones, something about like you know falling asleep and all that. But it, didn't he yeah, put out? Was was he, he um... shared a few of them? On um Twitter, was he asking like people for like um speaking t tuition or advice or something? I can't remember uh, because he said he was having trouble with um talking for extended periods of time that it's a bit straining. In one of his video, I said like you know I I, I actually slept in between because it was late night and your voice was soothing <laughs> yeah. in the comment. Yeah. yeah, and then the next I got a reply saying that you know how could you say it's soothing? It's irritating. I was like what. I think when something is so that. is so unique, it becomes divisive just by nature, right? Yeah. So uh, it was politicized. Yeah. Poli <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it becomes Wrap, tribal. Wrapped up in ideology. Travel. <laughs> We're gonna see see so, it on the American okay. news soon. Then exactly. Stephen Scott, whose voice I really love. Oh yeah. So, nice he's, he's, yeah so he's got a Scottish <laughs> accent, and someone commented, "Are you actually yeah. speaking English?" Like I don't know what <laughs> what language this is. <laughs> It's so, Scottish, it's so great. It's such it. an awesome, awesome, awesome voice. <laughs> um, the course that I took on Rebel Way, uh, the mastering environments, he has a Scottish accent and I love it so much. Oh, it's great. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Like Gleb's accent. 
Like, oh, yeah. yeah. I, I love listening <laughs> to Clip's stuff. Yeah. Belarus. 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 I used to call it Belarus um, when I was learning uh, when I was a kid. But then after uh, talking to people, everything changed. I pronounced so many stuff wrong. One of them was environment. I used to call environment. It's like, what? Oh, that's how you say it in French. Like, Is it? Like, yeah. Environment. Yeah. Environment. Okay. I uh, never knew okay. about oh, that. Sharon, yeah. okay, question for you then. Epitome yeah. or epitome? <laughs> or like something epitome, else? Epitome, right? Epi- yeah. Hmm. Interesting. And I never understood so like how the Brits you get to aluminium from aluminium. Aluminium. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> aluminium. That's trickery. <laughs> yeah, what is that? Yeah. Dude, I think we have a lot of uh, mix and match in our languages, okay? Especially we had like this, you know, the British thing happened 200 years ago. Oh yeah, for two hundred years. So yeah, yeah, we had the British thing. <laughs> so a little, um, <laughs> little thing, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I think uh, I mean they introduced English. So I thought we'll we'll speak like British people, but no, uh, movies yeah. came along and Hollywood came along and changed a lot of words and pronunciation. So it's all like we have a different accent. We call it like Indian accent. So it's completely different. So we just go syllable by syllable. And we run meant. Yeah. Yeah. There's peace and then the Fire Nation decided to attack. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. There, there there are some words that crop up every now and again when we're speaking. It's like, oh no, that, that we say it differently than that. I think there was yeah, there was like a it, maths it. one. I can't remember. You oh, this is it's way in the back of my mind now, but you were telling me about like Isla. Or, or no, was oh, that, Euler, Euler. Euler. I don't, Euler, I don't yeah. think I don't oh, think really? it was that. Well, no think, one knows how to say that. I think it was okay. Yeah, else, what but... do you say? Uh, uh, Chris? Why does it even exist? I mean, you know, Euler is what I say, but yeah, Euler, so, okay. the most annoying rotation system in the planet. Yeah, uh, whenever yeah, I yeah. see it, I just drop. Gimbal- oh my god! I <laughs> Did... Someone cut that out. Oh, oh. Nah, that's dating. Oh, but it's like the Bueller, the Bueller system. Oh, the, Bueller. There, there yeah, is. Bueller. Bueller. There are so many Bueller. words. Like when you're doing when you're doing the videos, you, you say it and you're like, someone's gonna comment because <laughs> like someone's you, gonna tear me apart for that. Yeah, yeah. you can't say oh you can't God. say both pronunciations. You have to pick one or the other, and you're like, oh, both is just a suicide. I'll just go for it. So, so have you guys ever like, seen my preamble in uh, there's a CG cookie tutorial? I think where one. what was it? I was oh yeah, one of the I did like a smoke easy smoke easy fire oh, yeah. or something like that right. tutorial yeah. and i did this like i pause right in the moment and said all right in my country we say cache all right now i know <laughs> that you're gonna want to put a comment but don't put that comment just step back step back from your keyboard the thing that always okay. i don't know why it, why it annoyed me but it like it's an australian thing because i asked on my other family as well it's like okay it's so something you, annoying about australia so you so, so you pronounce it data instead of data data yeah it's oh, data yeah. Like, uh, what no no not, not data 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 data, <laughs> data. that's it data no. data. Right. data we call it data. accent is a fine wine <laughs> yeah yeah I got ripped by a vice president in my first job out of college for saying data. He's like, it's data. data. We data. say data. And it was data. a pharmaceutical data company. So I was like, all right, I'll just start saying data. So now I say data. It's such an interesting data. I, always data. Just like uh, uh, I mean, oh, I used yeah. to call food uh, food, right? It's food. I eat food. I used to call food. it food. Food. Yeah, just food. I was like, I mean, for, I think, well, I mean, I can understand I like that you're on the that, yeah. you're on the border of Tamil Nadu, right? So, like yeah. the 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 kind of syllables you have to hear all the time, you know. But the vanakam yeah. uh, Exactly, it's that very that sound, oh, that, error, the thing that... that tongue, right? That's yes. Tamil, uh, and minus Tamil. Telugu, which is yeah, Tamil. Telugu doesn't yeah. quite sound like it, does it? Yeah, Telugu doesn't sound like that. It sounds. Yeah. Do you want to listen, anyone? That yeah, the guess. language I speak. Yeah, that's right. What should I say? Yeah, come on. Ask me so a question. Cool. I'll reply in Telugu. Uh, okay, Vanakam Yipiri Aki Erikinga. Nen Bagunan Mir Baun Nara. Nice. Yeah. Also, like, Tamil, in, in, uh, yes, Nen Tinano. Mir Tinara. Basically, uh, uh, Saptia. Did okay. you eat? Yeah. Yeah. That's great. In Tamil, <laughs> they, they say, uh, Have you eaten? That's the greeting. Uh, and, and the response is, you know, yes, I've eaten. And then, oh, what have you eaten? And that's how you say, hello, how are you? That's great. I love it. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. You should, see, you should, food. You should see James' confused face. I yeah, screenshotted so it. I need this to be an emoji immediately. 
<laughs> oh no! What? No. <laughs> my face? Please, oh, that, no. charity. You can't I'm take random. You can't take screenshots, of people. Oh my god! It looked like we're recording. Right? Come on, we're recording this. <laughs> All right. Oh wait, my god. On. Okay, Chris. Did you see you? You go. Yes, I gotta head off. We're gonna, yes. gonna get ready. Gonna start work. That's fair. But good to see you guys. Good to chat. Nice yeah. to nice finally chat. catch one of your recording yeah, like sessions. That. I can't believe it. It's the first time in almost a year. Yeah, it's yeah, awesome. It's true. Yeah, I'm thanks for coming then. along. And uh, remember, everyone, go and check out his channel. You have a good hey, easy film. Come check me out. <laughs> yeah, subscribe to his channel. Help me, and help smash me stay, that like button. Help me stay ahead of Aaron. We're racing at the moment. All right, hold on. I guess I've given Aaron a, a fair number of shout outs, and I think I mentioned your channel maybe twice or something. So <laughs> we'll try oh, for oh, a more. Shout out, yeah. right. yeah, I've from? never been featured in your uh, good new channels to check out. Uh, Curtis, okay. uh, yeah, Curtis, what's going maybe, on? We put me on the list one day. Curtis, I need oh, a shout out. I've always, I think goal. That's you're probably, you're yes. probably in like this midpoint because I've always tried to do really small people. Like, I think we got Isaac Gazmarian. Um, from like I don't know where he was before, but we got him like past a partnership thing in one in like one day or something. Nice. Two days. That's awesome. Wow. So, no, you that's should keep amazing. doing that. Yeah. Yeah. My channel gets enough uh, enough shout outs. Yeah, I gotta hop off as well too, guys. But it was great yeah. catching up with everyone. It's been so long. I'm gonna try to be more regular, jump it on these. Yeah, it's, it's not usually this I mean, long. We've we got like five minutes until two hours, and we usually only do one yeah. hours. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, right. Uh, it's gonna be kind like... of busy next month here as I prep for this launch, but once that's over and my move is done, uh, I'll be able mm -hmm. to kind of settle in and, and hang out with y'all a lot oh, more. Oh, about the uh, about the launch, do you have like tickets to like a seating zone or something? I I'll be just able to go wherever. Um, I'll I'll just be like kind of moving around to different spots, getting different shots of it. Um, I'm kind of like man on the street. I might actually appear on the live uh, broadcast as well too. I did a broadcast mm -hmm. back in October where I was one of the co-hosts. Um, so there's a chance I might jump on it uh, as well for this one, which would be fun. Um, yeah, so I'll be right there, front row, yeah. watching it. Good. I'll be famous when you, if you, if you're there, okay. All my friends will be like, "What? Charin knows this person?" <laughs> yes, <I laughs> yeah, do. I'll let you guys know if you wanted to tune in. It's gonna be really early in the morning. It's like I think five in the morning is the launch Eastern. Yeah. For um, you, right? Then so it'll be even. That actually would work well for you, I think, though, since yeah, you're like, uh, I guess of what, like ten hours ahead of us or something. Twelve point five. Um, yeah. What's it? Go what's it going up on? Uh, Atlas gonna... Five. Atlas Five. Oh, cool. i have seen a couple of those. Yeah, when is it? Cool. When is, which October sixteenth is the when the launch window opens. Uh, sometimes because of delays, like if there's a boat that appears out off the coast, they have to you know postpone it or there's storms or something. So it opens then, but it's a really tight window because to hit our gravitational um, points that we need to be through for a slingshot out there, it has to be in this like one week period, pretty much when we launch. So it's gonna be sometime it, in October. Is it ULA? Uh, yes. Yeah, they'll hit it. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Nice. So, should be cool. It's my first ever, so I'm excited to see it. Hopefully, Very nice. Blast yeah, off in space. All the best. Yeah. All right. Awesome, man. But Keep us good seeing everyone again. Yeah, Glad yeah, everyone's doing well. Likewise. All right. All right. Peace. Bye.